Sometimes the star or the bright object that we look at in the night sky is so far away that all it looks like to our naked eyes, even with our telescope, is just like a cloud. So I'm just going to show you something. Let me zoom in so you can see the Crab Nebula here. Okay, and what we see here is basically nebula, which means cloud, interstellar cloud, Greek. Okay, so the Greeks were the first people who look up at the sky and started naming things and we followed their names. So this Crab Nebula is what we call a supernova remnant. Okay, so supernova remnant means once upon a time, long time ago, there was a star here and this star went through the life cycles and it exploded. Okay, so massive stars or stars with very large mass will explode at the end of their life cycle. And the explosion kind of look like this. So it starts off like this and booms. So I want you to pay attention to this GIF of a supernova explosion. Okay, so what we have is a star that's at the end of its life cycle. It will expand a bit and then it explodes. Expand a bit, then explodes. Okay, so at the end of this explosion, we get what we call a nebula or supernova remnant, which is your nebula, this one, okay? So what are left are just interstellar dust and clouds, just, you know, floating around in space. And in the middle here, there is a neutron star, okay? So if you've learned the life cycles of stars, you would know that this will happen. But one very interesting thing about this supernova explosion is that there is a boom, sudden increase in intensity. Now, although we may not be able to pick up the individual stars because, you know, they're kind of too far away. You can't really tell, you know, when I zoom in and look at something that is really far. Let's say I, you know, go back out and look for stuff. This thing is actually like, can't really see. And the further the object is, the more grainy, you know, or the harder it is to tell when we look up into the night sky, it won't look as distinct as the bright dots that we will expect from a sepoid variable. So, which means we need to use a different method or a different standard candle. And ladies and gentlemen, this supernova explosion, this is our another type of standard candle. We are going to use its peak luminosity. So when this luminosity peaks, and that light began to shoot through space and travel towards Earth. Using the inverse square law, we can also calculate values like distances of this supernova explosion to our planet. All right, so let's check it out in our notes. All right, so at very large distance, we cannot see individual stars. All right, so because they are too far away. So CFIT variable, cannot be used as standard candles for further galaxies. Cannot, too far away. A supernova, as mentioned, I'll show you just now, is a star that suddenly and very rapidly increases luminosity. Okay, so basically it's at the end of its life cycle. Generally, that's when supernova explosion will occur. So very rapidly increases its luminosity. because of an explosion that ejects most of its mass away. So basically, it's an explosion. And when you see and you look at the nebula, nebula, which is the interstellar cloud, okay, that cloud is basically what is remain of a supernova explosion. Okay, so when we think about supernova, right, what we care about is the sudden increase in luminosity. Okay, and type 1a, of course, there are different classifications for supernova, but we're going to focus on this particular type, okay, because we use it as a standard candle, all right? So this type 1a is so bright when they explode that they can be seen in distant galaxies and then dim over a period of days and months. So that light shines so bright that even after the sun dies and then nothing is left but the remnants and the nebula clouds, the light is still traveling in space. Isn't that quite poetic? Okay, so if you look at this light curve, you can see, zero, let's say day zero is when the, super, the, the supernova explosion occurs. You notice that the intensity is really bright. Okay, when they say luminosity per solar unit is, is, you know, 
more than 10 to the power of nine times the light, the brightness of the star. You look at the sky and look at how bright the star is. I mean, the sun is. This is solar units. So it's how many times brighter than the sun. Okay. So the type 1a supernova explosion occur with the same from the same mass of stars because if you remember for the from the star life cycle different masses will have different kind of life cycle small stars something else will happen to them this is about a medium sized star a supernova okay uh, and then very massive stars will form black holes very interesting stuff right but that's not covered in our a level content so you just need to know that Type 1a supernova or any kind of supernova occurs for the same mass of star, which means they will all have nearly the same luminosity at the peak of their outbursts. So what we care about is the brightness of the stars that we can see, because to be honest, we there's no way to reliably use orbital mechanics or what you study in gravitational fields to calculate any meaningful data from a star that's so far away, right? Okay, so what we'll probably do is we can look at the electromagnetic radiation, you know, the light, the EM radiation that reaches Earth. Okay, so basically what we're, what we're trying to say here is same mass will have the same uh, light curve because same mass will have the same type 1a supernova explosion. All right, so light curve will look, uh, the light curve will look like this. You can see that um, it will reach a peak at its maximum. So think back about the diagram that I've sort of shown you just now. This one here, okay? So the peak is here and then it explodes. So it's a bit like this is why it's happening. Whoops, it explodes. Okay, it explodes. So here is where the explosion happened. So the intensity increases very rapidly. This is already 10 to the power of 7. Let me zoom in a bit. This is already 10 to the power of 7. So it's more than 1 million times brighter than our good old sun. So it will just suddenly shine very hot and white and bright. Then explode. Okay? So this is why it's going on. And then with time, that intensity, the, the star will slowly cool down, wherever that's left of the star. All right? So this is basically using a different idea to measure uh, luminosity and using luminosity to determine distance. All right, so let's look at it, an example, a short one, okay? So a type 1a supernova is observed in another galaxy with peak, so all we care about is the peak, peak radiant flux intensity of 9 times 10 to the power of 8, negative 18, watt meter negative 2. Teacher, you say it's bright, oh, but then... Why is this value so small? Well, this value is kind of small because the star is really, 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 really far away. So using the inverse square law, no matter how bright you are, if you're super far away, we can't really see how bright the star actually is, even if it's a supernova explosion. Okay? If we assume that the peak luminosity of type 1a is about 10 to the power of 6 watt, estimate the distance of this galaxy from Earth. And we can even tell how long ago did this explosion happen? Was it yesterday? Okay, and we are given uh, the value of one light year, okay, in meters. All right, let's try to figure out this question. So this is our star, okay, and we assume that the peak luminosity, which is 10 to the power of 36, occurs at the star, and then the maximum intensity or the pulse will begin to travel or make its way towards earth or rather your observer lah. okay so maybe this is earth observing i'm drawing an eye here to observe this one so by the time this light actually travels here okay you know your light wave the radiant flux intensity measured here is 9 times 10 to the power of negative 18 watt per meter squared. Okay, so this peak, this peak luminosity L, by the time it reaches 
our earth, we will observe the peak as this much. So we can still use the inverse square law, okay, which is radian flux intensity is equal to L over 4 pi d squared, okay, luminosity over area. So I guess we can substitute the value F times 10 to the power negative 18 is equal to 10 to the power of 36 over 4 pi d squared. Okay, I want to check in on my calculator. So my calculator tells me, once I solve for d, that d will be equal to 9.4 times 10 to the power of 25 meter. But they did say estimate. So when they say estimate, I'll try to keep my answer to 1 SF. So 9 times 10 to the power of 25 meter because sticking to one sig fig. All right, this is part A. So at the end of the day, right, we are just looking at the peak. The peak can easily be detected. So by the time it reaches Earth, okay, or reaches the observer, we can use the inverse, uh, inverse square relationship because all type 1A supernova has a peak of around 10 to the power of 36. What? Okay, next. How long ago did this explode? Well, one light year, this uh, 9.46 times 10 to the power of 15, this one gives us the distance traveled by light in one year. Hence, light year. Okay. So I guess we could use the simple equation of, uh, you know, 9 times 10 to the power of 25 divided by 9.46 times 10 to the power of 15. This will give me around 10 to the power of 10, right? Because, you know, 9 divided by 9.45, we are still estimating, by the way, 9.46, so 0 0.95. Okay, so it was around 10, 10 to the power of 10 light years, which means the supernova exploded or the sun exploded 10 to the power of 10 light, 10 up to the power of 10 years ago. Quite long, right? Yes. So this is what it is like. It's very mind boggling because it's so far away, right? So although it exploded 10 to the power of 10 years ago which is like come on that's 10 zeros okay like our human brain cannot understand one okay this is about like what 10 10 billion right okay so this is our wonderful universe at this scale things are quite amazing all right so just as a recap what we're looking for is the peak radiant flux intensity. So during the explosion, the light is actually 10 to the power of 36. By the time it reaches us, it is 9 times 10 to the power of negative 18 watt per meter squared. So we can place the luminosity 10 to the power of 36 and also the detected radiant flux intensity of this uh, peak into the equation and we can find the distance. Okay, With that distance, we can actually divide by one light year to find the number of years the light has taken to travel to us and it is 10 billion years meaning this explosion occurred 10 billion years ago so in a nutshell your type 1a supernova is a class of supernova that talks about the explosion of stars during the explosion the stars will suddenly create a pulse of very large intense luminosity or intensity okay so this very large luminosity is a burst of light and that burst of light will travel across the space and universe and after 1 billion years so 10 billion years it arrived on the earth bound observer and the earth observer stare at the brightness Ta -da! so we can use this to estimate distances as well all these are just estimations okay so this is more suitable for stars or galaxies or bright objects that are really really far away so far away that we can't even tell the individual stars apart so what we are picking up is just the sudden peak sudden peak in luminosity or brightness all right okay that's it for this one see you in the next video